Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a uh, very interesting, very, very, very cool little species. Um, a lot of guys would have targeted him before, a lot of guys would have caught him before. Um, the pick handled barracuda, also known as a sea pike, Mike the sea spike, depending who you speak to. Um, oh no, there goes my lure, is another phrase often used with them. Um, Sphirenia jello. Uh, interestingly, uh, the sea pike is one of 10 of the genus of the Sphirena genus that we get in southern Africa. So there are quite a few species that are very similar to them. Um, and there are there is a lot of confusion as to which species which often guys. So, so the, with that issue then you often get catch returns and stuff for research is often then a bit muddled because you'll get everyone calling say a sawtooth barracuda also calling that a sea pike because it looks so similar. Um, but yeah, as we mentioned, sea pike, they are tubular. So almost if you want to call it serpent-like, they do move a little snakish in the thing. They use their whole body to swim more than just, just fanning with the tail. They are quite tubular, so round in shape, but with a slightly flattened sides and very long elongate, very sh sharp coming to a point on the nose. Um, and then they got bars that run down them like that. Uh, Fairly large eye, they're predatory fish, so they're using that eye to, to hunt and, and, and stalk other fish. They, the, the bars that go down them, there are about 20 of them, the bars that run along the sea pike like that. So that's the easiest way of identifying it as a bar instead of having the chevron shapes, because that's where it gets confused. That and the sawtooth are often confused, because the sawtooth has little almost diamond type shapes on it instead of just the plain bars. Um, the fins on them are like a dusky kind of yellow, um, so it's that dark, so, sort of looks almost dusty yellow, but these are, it's called dusky yellow. Um, very, very, very sharp teeth. So as, you, as I said earlier with the, oh no, there goes my lure, very often the sea pike, when you're fishing for them or fishing for other species and you're not using wire, the sea pike will grab it and dart out of the water like that. And with the sharp teeth, your light line does not stand a chance. So, uh, it, it, it can be quite a loathed species um, with guys losing 100 rand lures at a time or maybe even more expensive to <laughs> fishing for little oxide tarpon or little kingies and the sea pike come along in a, in a thing and, and get rid of all your lures for you. Uh, size wise, they grow to about a meter and a half. Um, most of them you're going to get in the ones you encounter in the estuaries are going to be a lot smaller. They're the, all the juveniles so anything from what's that about 30 centimeters and up and then all, as you move offshore you generally get the bigger fish now they do get to 16 kilos um, there is an essay record that isn't official as far as, as my understanding goes that sits at 24.2 kgs but because the the world angling or the internationally acknowledged size of 16 is sort of their max Something that's 24 kilos sits a little bit funny. So it could have been that it's a different species that was measured wrong, but yeah, you're looking, most fish are gonna be sort of a kilo to five kilos, and then anything bigger than that's a big fish, anything smaller than that's a, a, a little baby. Um, they are a shoaling fish, so they like to hunt in packs. They, they congregate over any of the reef uh, structures, so like ledges or pinnacles offshore. The spear fishermen and divers will know this, you often get huge schools, we're talking maybe a thousand individuals um, sitting on one pinnacle, just all the, all the same size, um, just chilling like that. That could be a spawning aggregation, it could just be they're chilling with their friends, you never know. Um, but yeah, they do they do like to aggregate together and stay, stay together. And as they get bigger, they often go into smaller groups, so you'll see there's actually a pair of them that sits here in Durban Harbour that have been there for years. It's just the two of them that stay together, which is uh, quite dramatic. In terms of feeding, uh, they really are voracious piscivores, which means they, they really like fish. They, that's, what the, that's what they're going after. Any small fish, whether they're in the estuaries, they're going to be hunting your glasses and your mullet. Offshore, then they're going to hunt the, the myriad of fish that we get off there. Um, they do also like squid. They will eat squid and they can get their, their teeth on it. So in terms of baits, meaty fishy baits are going to be your best bet. And then obviously something for choco. They, you often catch them, they, they're very difficult spe species to target uh, specifically. But you normally get them as bycatch when you're going for 
generally sharks because you do get bitten off if you're not not fishing with a bite trace or an FMJ. So your your trace and your your baits that you're going to be using for like a grey shark or something like that would be would be adequate to catch these guys. Um, very often if you're in a group as well, if you do catch one, someone else will catch another one. So that's because they're together like that, they generally go into a bit of a feeding melee. Um, summer spawning. So summertime is going to be when they're at their peak um, in terms of concentrations of here. And they are very, very popular with your spear fishermen and with your recreational boat and shore fishermen. So lures and bait, both very effective for them. If you are using lures for them, it's ideal not to use wire, um, just gives, makes the lure look a lot more natural, but unfortunately you do get put off quite a lot. So when it comes to targeting them, um, if you can afford to lose lures, don't use wire on them, uh, much like fishing for shad, but you will get put off quite a bit. So if you can afford to use lures, or this is something where a very affordable lure like our Rattler really comes, it comes into its own. Um, the, because they, they cost a lot less, it's, just, uh, it's a lot less painful seeing a sea pike jumping through the air with a rattler in its mouth than a, say, 400 rand jack fin that you imported from Italy. So, yeah, use lures. Um, anything with a nice aggressive action, something like a jerkbait type style where you fish where, you, where you're really whipping it, it works very well. Otherwise, if you're using bait, um, live bait, are really really loved by them uh, any of your most you know, your most prominent fish in the area um, and yeah the spear fishermen do do like to shoot them um, they are quite nice to eat they do suffer from something called cigateria poisoning which is an accumulation of the toxins based from uh, the reef so a parrot fish eats the toxins from the reef uh, eats the reef itself and obviously gets some of the toxins into its body a sea pike comes along, eats four parrotfish. Now suddenly all the toxins that were in the parrotfish now from four parrotfish go into one sea pike. It's called bioaccumulation. So that's where you can often get cigateria poisoning and that's where people in tropical areas will tell you not to eat stuff like barracuda and any other game fish in general. Luckily along our coast we're fairly safe. So feel free to keep one. Uh, try it out to make nice cutlets if you want. Um, but yeah, the sea pike. Very nice fish to catch. Ultra, as an ultralight enthusiast, they are one of the most phenomenal species to target. They often jump out the water, they give you a very good run. Um, they're both estuary and shoreline based, so you, they're available to everyone. Um, and yeah, they're definitely one for the species list. So go out, get some lures, get some bait, and go catch a sea pike. Cheers.